Good afternoon, everyone. Happy New Year. Welcome everybody who's watching us live, as well as everybody who's going to watch this message afterwards. I pray that you're blessed and that this year finds you with the Lord and His blessings chasing after you, both financially, spiritually, with the gifts of the Spirit, most importantly with the outpouring of His presence and anointing for your life. I pray so many things for you. And I pray that you would be blessed today. I love you guys. I'm so glad to have you here. Welcome. Let's not be afraid to sing along. You are the Lord. There's no t To the Lord, there's no time and space. The Bible says where two or more are gathered in His name, there He is in the midst of them. Melody's here with me. So the Lord will be here if we push you into the Lord, right? And He'll be here with us. And He'll be here with you. In between online, I've seen, I've listened to messages from the 1980s that the Spirit of God was still moving upon me powerfully. That I've listened to some, from the 1980s, some old conferences. The Spirit of God does not care about time or space. The same anointing that's then is released into the atmosphere for us. And so it is with messages that we'll hear online while we're at work, even on our audio, even driving your car. If you guys are listening, it doesn't really matter the physical location. And we know this also because Jesus said, woman, I tell you the truth, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will be the place to worship. But rather the Father is looking for true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Not fake and in false, but in spirit and truth. So he's more concerned about the spirit by which you present and come to God with. And so when you come to him, your own spirit, making intercessory with the Lord, your spirit, your desire, your hunger for the Lord, it's very powerful. If you come to the Lord with a contrite heart, the Bible tells you, rent your hearts, not your garments. They used to rip their clothes as a sign of, Lord, look at me. But God says, rip your heart as a sign of saying, Lord, look at me. He said, I'm, not, I'm tired of the blood of bulls and the blood of sheep and lambs and goats. I'm tired of that. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. The Lord was looking for things deeper than just our physical outward stuff that we used to do. Now everything is guided by His Spirit. And with His Holy Spirit poured out, we will press in. Amen. So let's worship the Lord. Let's sing some worship songs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew. We're going to turn to Matthew chapter. Let's start in 24. I want to tell you something that happened to me yesterday. I preached a message last th on Thursday of part 4 of the when the seed falls but the message actually was not recorded and i don't have a copy of it it was really strange i must have made a mistake of some sort but it wasn't recorded so i do apologize for that normally i also dual stream a backup copy to youtube it wasn't recorded and i was like okay lord do you need me to preach the message again and he said no not yet but i will soon in the meantime the lord reminded me of the event that happened yesterday and I believe he's leading me to minister on this message. So this is the message I'm going to share with you. All right. So yesterday, me and Melody were out all New Year's. We actually stayed over at Margie and Elvin's house. So we stayed there and they invited us over for a New Year's Eve and we watched the fireworks a little bit. We prayed in the New Year, me and Melody. And it was really fun. We played a bunch of games. We played board games and Monopoly with a vault. It was really fun. And we went directly to church. When we got home, we came in the room. And then we came out of the room and we locked the door of the room. So as soon as we got home, we're like, oh, we get to rest in our nice warm bed or a nice cool bed because we got some good AC in the room. And as soon as we're, we're like, okay, let's get some water, let's go back in the room, we come back to the room and the door is locked and we've been shut out. Now we're really, I'm like upset because I'm like, I need a shower. I, I basically, I think last night the mosquitoes bit me, they, got, they bit my, some of my fingers are swollen because all the ant bites that I got, my neck has got covered in mosquito bites. I got mosquito bites on my arms. I feel like I'm itchy and just wanna, you know, ever just wanna just go home and rest in your nice warm shower. Now I'm grateful when people invite me over, but sometimes you just want to go home, take a cool shower, either flop on the couch or flop on your bed and take a nice warm nap, especially when you've been pushing yourself lately and hard. Some of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. But what happened was we were locked out. So I said, 
no worries. We'll do the we'll do the card thing. So we said we got a card, and so Melody used the, one of the little department store cards, and we're trying to insert it into the door. But our door is in such a way where it's not really, you can't really bend it to the door. It's not that kind of way. Our door to our bedroom. If we can't put the card in to try and open the door and jimmy the lock, I said, no worries, I'm well versed in lock picking, Melody, or something that you guys don't know. I says, yes, I practice lock picking. I bought a, a lock picking kit about three years ago. I think it's maybe four years ago now. I said, don't worry, I used to practice picking locks as like puzzles and I would order locks and, and do it. And it's really fun. I know how it works. You got to put the pins in and you got to put the tension bar. And I was like, do you have anything I can use? Melody's like, I got a little bobby pin. I was like, this is good. The, as soon as I put the bobby pin in, it broke. The little tips broke. I said, okay. And then I realized it was there for a long time. I was like, man, I need a correct pry bar. So I got a little nail file. I bent it in half. I'm using that as the tension bar and I'm trying to hit the pins. And I got some of the pins and I got some of it, but the bobby pin wasn't strong enough to pull down these pins. These pins are really strong. So I was there for hours hours so I took I was there for an hour I took a break and then I was there for another hour then I took another break and then Melody said let's bring you a chair so I was on my knees and then I was on a chair and then I just put on an audiobook as I was trying to do it and I was there for another hour I think for about three hours I tried picking this lock I was like Melody's like don't worry we'll just call a locksmith Smith I said no I'm gonna get it I'm gonna get it Melody we're gonna I'm gonna pick this lock and I remember there was a movie I think it was called the rescuers down under it was a Disney movie where the little lizard uses his tail to try and pick the lock. <clears throat> and he spends all night and finally in the morning he gets it and he's all tired and he's like half asleep. I felt like that little lizard trying to pick the lock. It was hilarious. And what was really funny is that we didn't get it. And I'm like, okay, did we try breaking the window like the lock? And now the storm comes and now it's dark outside. We spent all day. We really, Melody took a nap. I really couldn't rest. I took a break, but I was just at it. I wasn't napping. I was just like, I can't rest. We got to get in our room. So now the storm's coming. I'm like, Melody, we got to do this now before it starts raining all night or the power's out. So let's use our flashlight. So I go in my room, my other room, I get a ladder, pull up the ladder, and I put it near my bedroom. Now my bedroom high off the little ridge because our house, how it goes down like that. So our bedroom, even though it's not two-story, it looks like it's a two-story because it's off the ground. So I put the ladder, we climbing up there to the bedroom window, and I'm trying to use the card again to try to open the window. And she goes, no, it's not gonna work. It's not that kind of lock. I'm like, oh, we gotta do something, Melody. And then Melody remembers, she says, I, we have a bathroom window in the bathroom a little tiny window a little square and there's a reason i'm telling you all this story guys and so i said are you serious you can fit through that she's like, yes i can fit there don't you worry i'm gonna i'm gonna do it i said all right let's do it so we take the ladder to the side of the house now it's raining really hard the ladder is getting slippery she's just hold me i said okay all right we got this metal ladder that extends so we put it against the bathroom window she's climbing up the side the lightning's going <laughs> It's a storm, it's what, we're all wet, we're not even dressed, I don't even got a t-shirt on, like, my clothes are inside the room, it is, we are like, we gotta get inside this room, we gotta get in there now, cause I, my clothes are there, and I'm just here in pants and a shirt, and Melody's like, oh, we're gonna do it, so she climbs, and then she's, she finally, she was like, I need to unlock the little, the little screen, so she punches it open, and then she unlocks the other one, and she was like, I don't know if I can get in this way, I said, Melody, I said, I don't, it's like a little square. I says, you got to go in backwards. Otherwise, you're going to fall down. You're going to hurt yourself. It's, you're going to land in the shower because the shower has that window. The window's in the shower of the room. And then you open the shower and there's the other part of the bathroom. And then you go in our bedroom in the, through the door. So she goes, she says, I think I can do it. I said, no, Melody, just hug me and then walk up the ladder backwards. So you're holding me and you're walking up backwards and I'll push you and I'll push you. I'm on the ladder. I says, I'll push you this way. She says, no, I'll just go face forward. Come over here, Melody. Real quick. Yeah, come here real quick. Come here. Don't throw on a fit. Come over here. She said, this is my suggestion. That I was going to have her like go on my shoulders and walk up the ladder backwards and put her feet through the window and go down feet first and she'll land. She was like, no, I'm going to go face forward. So she goes face forward. And then what she does is she like bends her knee. I don't know how she did it. She bent her knee to get her foot in the window 
And then she like puts one leg through the window and she's half and then she's hold me. So I'm like, oh no, she's I'm falling. So I'm grabbing her hands, I'm holding her, I'm at the top of the ladder. She's go, trying to contort her body to fit through a little box. I think the box is only this big. I'm not kidding you. It's like this big. I don't know how she did it. It's a window bathroom. It, so then she gets her other leg through, but now she's falling and now her pants rip because her pants are caught on the little hook. So she's ah, my pants, she's, I'm stuck. So now I'm holding her there. Now I have to, she's like, I can't stay on here. And, and so I hold her and then I'm trying to pull it. I'm like, I can't get you. And we're yelling cause of the rain, we're yelling, I can't get you. And then she, I was like, I just gotta rip it. So I ripped her pants and she and she fell in the shower. She, I think she cut her finger a little bit. Yeah, she got a cut on her finger. Her pants are torn and she got a, a little cut on her leg. But luckily, after much struggle, we made it inside the house. I took the ladder inside, she comes out the door, and the first thing she does is close the door. I'm like, did you lock it? She's like, no, I just wanted to see if the thing would work. And I was like, we tried for hours, it's not gonna work. But praise God, we finally got through. And that was our, and that was, huh? They said advantage of having a small wife. <laughs> <laughs> she said that's the advantage of having a small wife. <laughs> I don't know. I, I couldn't do it probably with another wife. I probably couldn't do it. She was really small now. That is an advantage. Now, why am I telling you this? It, it's funny. However, as the Lord was leading me, He reminded me these scriptures. And we're going to read through them some scriptures today. That is going to shed some light on some things from the Bible. So let's turn and we'll start our reading in Matthew. All right, Matthew 24, verse 29. Would anybody like to read this for me? I can read it for you. Thank you, Christina. Okay. <clears throat> and immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the people of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with the hand mill, one will be taken and the other left. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day the Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have left his house to be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom the master has put in charge of the servants and his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, my master is staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink the drunkard. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites for there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. 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 I'm now going to read this last part from Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 12. And it says this. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps <clears throat> and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. For when the foolish ones 
For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. And as the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered and said, Since there will not be enough for us and you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourself. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you do not know the day nor the hour. Now in both Matthew chapter 24 and Matthew chapter 25, Jesus speaks of an event that we don't know the day nor the hour. And this event what he was talking about was a coming and a taking away of his people. A time when he would take away the people. Now, there's a lot of biblical debate and discussion about when these things would happen. There's evidences that this taking away would be at the end of the world. There are some evidences that this will be taken away and then a time of tribulation and then a final judgment where Christ comes on earth and reigns and throws Satan and the Antichrist and, some, and the beast in hell. There are some evidences that point to a rapture already taking place thousands of years ago in the very first generation, the generation and lifetime of the disciples. And that the first Antichrist that we know of was Nero. And the destruction of the temple and everything actually happened just as the Bible said it would. There was even some old paintings where they showed drawings, where they showed a historical record of Christ appearing in the clouds. Now, whatever the case is, because there's biblical references to support many different debates, and we can go, and I have my own personal opinions about that. The one thing is for sure about all of these things is that we know that everything that has happened will lead to an end point. And Jesus will step foot again on planet Earth. And there will be some kind of taken away, even if it's at the very last moment. So for argument's sake for today, we're just going to say that there will be a coming moment where there will be a taking away moment, where the door will be shut and some people will want to get in, but they won't be able to at that moment. And things may become very bad after these events. So let's talk about them in detail. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 24. Jesus told us, look and be watchful because you do not know the hour that the Son of Man will come to you. Our job as believers and Christians is to be ready. Now, the Bible talks about this coming away where, one, where two people will be in a field, one person will be taken, two women will be grinding at the grain, one person will be taken, the other left behind. We call this being left behind. That event we call the rapture. And because Jesus teaches that there will be a rapture, I believe there will be a rapture. Even if there was evidence for a rapture in the past, I still believe there will be some kind of rapture in the future, even at the very last moment. Because the Bible, the end of the book, has not all happened yet. Even for people who believe that some of these things happened long ago, and that there, the Bible says that there would be a thousand year reign of Christ on the earth, there are, biblical evi there are evidences on the earth that support that there was a time of this great civilization all across the earth that lasted for almost a thousand years. We also see missing historical document, missing historical timelines, like a missing thousand years. Some people call it the Renaissance period. Some people call it that. But the truth is there's evidences for this ancient people that was highly refined. The works of them are all over the earth. Marbles and statues and buildings that we cannot construct 
abandoned cities, this time of a tribulation period appears to have happened all over the earth. There was many things that are buried 40 feet under the earth, all across the all across planet Earth, buried cities right in America, buried cities across the world, ancient Tataria, ancient Antiquatech, ancient cities that are just abandoned. And they, they lie to people and they say, oh, we just built them. But these cities have been there and people find them on Google Earth. And these cities are immaculate and beautiful as if they were part of a time long ago. Now, there's evidences for those kinds of things. And that's a crazy topic to even t talk about. But I'm not afraid to talk about some of those things. That's not the point of my message today. The point of my message is that no matter where we believe about the tribulation or end time spectrum, one thing is for sure that we are not at the end of the book. Of that thousand year reign, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that Jesus would come and then that people would, the church would be taken away and there would be a thousand year reign of Christ when, they, when he comes back on the earth after the tribulation. That after that thousand year reign, Satan would be released again upon the earth. And this is what the Bible tells us in Revelations. That Satan would be allowed to go back on the earth to deceive us once again. And some people believe we are living into that, that time period. I'm carefully examining all the evidences as, I, as I've, I've been a Christian for many years. I'm versed in some of the end time theology. But I'm considering a lot of these things because, again, there's biblical debate within every community and even among some of the best of the scholars. And as we look into these things, it's very possible that we are at that time where Satan has been released upon the earth approximately about, I think it's around close to 200, 300 years ago, something like that. And he's been ramping up his plans once again that lead to an end time event where there will be a beast or an antichrist that will force great and small to receive a mark on the right hand or forehead. We see this one world order, this new world order. We see the elites of the world trying to usher this in currently and trying to accelerate. It. Now, I believe for a fact that those plans will fail. However, there will be another plan implemented in the future. And I'm telling you this so you know before it happens. And I know some of these things sound scary. But you're going to see God turn the tables right now on the current plans. And a lot of stuff is going to be exposed about their whole new world order, their agenda to microchip everyone and to usher in the end of the book. Because they believe that's when their Messiah, their Satan, will be unleashed upon the earth and they've been trying to release that. There'll be also judgments on the earth during those days. And they may be in our lifetime. I hope not. But I always have to preach these things like as if we are in there because the Lord has led us to talk about some of these things. And I'll show you why in, again in just a moment. Now, in the future, there will be another plan if this current plan is destroyed and exposed. And some of you guys all know, you don't, you don't even need to be an expert in Bible theology to see that there's a plan to, to bankrupt the world, to implement a one world government. We see the money system. It's already, the framework's already in place with XRP. Prophet Robin said, there will be a war in the future about who controls cryptocurrency. Because if you can control the framework for the interledger protocol, that's the whole world's going to be built on. You can actually just get rid of everything and just use one currency to run the whole world. And I believe that those days will happen in the future. And if so, you'll need IDs and they'll ID you and they'll ID the whole person, every person in the world. And as the Bible says, you will not be able to buy nor sell without receiving this mark on your right hand or forehead. We know this as the at mark of the beast. Now, these are end of the game. This is how the Bible ends. This is how the story ends. But in the framework of that time, many different things can happen. Good things. I believe that in our future, before the end of the game, whether it's in our lifetime or not, before the end of the game, we have a job to do. As believers, we have to raise up to do what God has called us to do. We have to also be ready for the end, whether it's the end of our life and tomorrow we're in a car accident, God forbid, or tomorrow we just breathe our last, God forbid, or tomorrow the Lord takes us away in a taking away event, as Jesus said, and that's why I preach it. Or if tomorrow's the very end of the book, whatever the case is, we are called to be ready because many will not be ready and many will not be many will not enter the kingdom of God. Many will not make it to heaven 
Only a few will be saved. In fact, the Bible tells us that only a few will be saved. And we can get more into this, and I do want to get into some of these things. Let's talk about, let's talk about that last thing I wanted to mention. And I have to say this as a side note. And I know I'm throwing a lot at you. I know. I, please forgive me. I'm throwing a lot at you when it comes to end time stuff. But I'm here for you. As long as God has made me a pastor in this generation, in this time, in this season, I will be here for you in that capacity. Okay, as long as God willing, I'm still on this earth. There will be another plan that's implemented, and that other plan is, has to do with aliens. There will be deceptions upon man. There will be plagues that will be released upon the earth, and they're going to blame them on various things. But really, these are some of the beginnings of some of the judgments. And there will be a mass deception. The Bible says that even the elect in those days will be deceived. Let's talk about some of these things. Okay, let me pull it up. Matthew chapter 24. For false Christ, we were just reading this in our past, past verse, by the way. For false Christ and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Who are the elect? They are the chosen people of God. They are the people of God that God has chosen for His purposes on this earth, to do the things of God. And it's possible that when some of these signs and wonders and false Christ appear in the end, that it's possible that even the elect people will fall and be deceived. And there will be deceptions upon the earth. I personally, after investigating many of these matters, I can see how these things can happen. And I really believe that there will be false beings from these sky beings or aliens, what we know as aliens, and they're going to come and deceive men. I was made aware of a project, and I believe the project is called Project Bluebeam. I think that's the project. Some of you guys may have heard of it. Project Bluebeam. And I'm letting you guys know so that you remember what I'm about to say. Okay, Project Bluebeam <clears throat> is a holographic technology where they project light upon light. And if they ever bounce light upon light, they can actually make the light appear in the middle of the sky. Now, combine that with images, CGI, special effects, you can make some very high quality holographic technology. It exists in the world, it exists now. I'm under, I found many places where they actually use it. Some people don't believe it's being used, it's being used, it is there. But in the future, there's going to be a very big, large project where in every nation of the world, in every re region, they're going to have a plan where there is the predominant prophet or God who will be one image. And this image will be projected in the sky. So over India, it will be Muhammad. Okay, over Bangladesh, it's going to be Muhammad the prophet. It's going to be different. Pro it's going to be Buddha in some places. It's going to be Gandhi in some regions, right? It'll be different people who said, hey, and in some regions, like over America, it will be Jesus. But it's not a real Jesus. People will hear and see this thing happen in the sky. And you will see in the sky this deity appear. And it's going to be large. <clears throat> now, just because the project is called Project Bluebeam, doesn't mean it's actually blue, but you will see Jesus appear in the sky and it's not really Jesus. And Jesus is going to say something to the effect of, my friends, I'm here. I love you, but you got it wrong. There's some things that you got wrong. And the Muhammad is going to say the same thing. And Buddha is going to say the same thing. And at the end, all the images, Jesus is going to come. He's, it's just love. It, Christ is just a, they're going to say things like, Christ is just an idea. What really matters is just love. Never mind the cross. Never mind the Son of Man for what he said, that he is sitting on the right hand of, throne, of the throne and that there is no other way to heaven but by me, Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus said. There's John 3, 3. Now, all these images will form into one image. And this image will be the image that the Bible talks about and how the Antichrist will force us to worship the image of the beast. Okay, the Bible tells us that there will be an image of the beast and that we need to worship that image. And all who will worship that will first to receive the mark on their right hand or their forehead. That technology already exists. We talk about that sometimes. But now I'm letting you know about this project, Boobie. 
because I have to remind people, and some people haven't listened to this, and this is your first time hearing some of these things. I recently was reminded by somebody yesterday, they sent me a video link from somebody who's talking, and they also mentioned the same things that I learned about in the 90s. I also heard about it again just yesterday, but now I heard that they all have the framework and plan. The only thing that they still have a little problem with is what they're gonna do about the cross what they're going to do about the whole cross story. What it, because it means a lot of things. And they're going to take fancy words, fancy meanings, simplify them, and deceive you to focusing on just Christ the idea rather than Christ the deity. Already right now, this happens in certain astrological, astrological communities where they talk about Christ being the idea. He was not a real person. He's just an idea. No, he was absolutely real. And he absolutely died for me and you. He absolutely shed his physical blood. And the blood bears witness. And it will bear witness once again. And you'll see that in the future. And that's a topic for another day. But I'm letting you guys know this technology already is exists. And I've been reminded of it recently. And this technology we heard about. Now, there's another component to this technology that you have to hear about. So I'm grateful I get to share some of these ideas with you and some of these topics. It's important you remember this and share some of this content with those you love. I've investigated this stuff for years, okay? Probably more than I, I, want, I wish I did. But years ago, I really investigated these things. Probably hundreds and hundreds of hours <laughs> of, my, of my life back in the day. And I kept coming to the same stories. So this is what I'm sharing. Now, the other component of this technology is the sound technology. There is a frequency and a sound type of technology that can play a sound directly into your brain. Not audible, but into your brain. And it'll, it'll sound like it's coming from within you. You'll hear the voice. This technology was actually practiced even commercially for a local movie. There was a billboard that people would walk past this billboard and the speaker would play this frequency that you couldn't hear all of audibly, but you could hear it in your mind. And you'd walk past the billboard and you'd hear the and you'd hear the voice and the voice would say, What's that? Who is that? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's coming. And it would play this scary music, so you'd feel very fearful when you walk past this billboard. This technology exists, and what will happen is you'll be at work, you'll be helping a customer, you'll be on the phone, and you will hear a sound like a trumpet. It what it does is it tries to mimic what's happening in heavenly realms. And you'll be like, you'll say, come outside, come outside. And you'll feel, you'll hear like you need to come outside. And you will go outside and every person on planet Earth, in every region, this sound will be broadcast to them. And they're going to hear the sound and everyone's going to be like, do you hear that? I hear it. And it's going to say, come, I'm calling you, come. And they even may even use your name, your individual name. They may even do that. And people will go outside and they'll look into the sky and they're going to see Jesus. They're going to see Muhammad, they're going to see an angel, they're going to see Buddha, they're going to see all of these things in the sky, and many people will be deceived. For some, it will be aliens that they'll see, all these beings of light, and they're all going to say, no, everyone has got it all wrong. And what they're going to do is they're going to take religion and transform it into a global religion. Now, these frameworks for a global religion is already at work. Some people don't believe me, but I've come across just recent articles from conventions, from places, something like the World Economic Forum. But it's not the World Economic Forum. It's like the World Religion Forum. We're talking about the Pope showing up. We're talking about many group Mel Melly's nodding her head. We're talking about many leaders from major sects of religion coming together to form a framework for a one world religion. What, they're just missing the alien component, but that will be added to them. They'll, they're going to make their own Bible. They're going to make their own. They just recently made their own Ten Commandments. Now, this is crazy for this kinds of things happen. But we would not be wise if we did not lay framework and talk about these things. You know how it ends, your part to play in some of these things. So you combine some of these technologies with Project Bluebeam, and you can see how some of these things will happen. Now, I recently came across a video on, I think it was on, I don't want to say Facebook, it was like some kind of clip that was, that I came across. And people in one country, I'm not sure what country, and they were talking about this. And there was an angel in the sky, and the angel was like, like this, but it looked, it didn't look like a full real angel. It looked like that blue beam technology. It had color, 
It was a hologram, and it looked like this angel floating. And it looked, it just looked like a movie in the sky. Disney does a similar thing if you go to World of Color, where they play this fog. They put the fog in there, and it looks like a wall. And they play all the movies like in the middle of the water. It's like floating in the sky. It's pure magic. It's beautiful. And they play the lights, the colors, the sound. It's hypnotic, in a way. But what happens is that technology that's way more advanced than just bouncing on fog was played in the clouds. They made this angel look like he's floating over the clouds and you had hundreds of people lined up on the mountain taking pictures of this angel. Video of this angel. They were taking, and I'm sure those videos, some of you may have seen this video, but they're all worshiping the image. Oh, oh Lord, thank you so much. And they're just praising this angel. Now, even if it was an angel, praise God for the angel. But we have to use discernment. We can, as uh, Steve Quell from Mr. Mall's presentation, he says, rebuke first and then ask questions second. I come from a church and some of my background where many people started receiving visions of heaven and visions of hell. But there were even false Jesuses that appeared to people and false heavens that appeared to people. And Jesus instructed the people of our church where I come from to rebuke even him. Because then what happened is a Jesus would appear to the people while they were praying and, and the Jesus would say, praise God, you don't need to pray anymore. Go ahead and open your eyes. And this was a time when they were doing intensive prayer, an intensive type of prayer on their knees at, through the night. They were praying through the night. And Jesus, you don't need to pray anymore. Just open your eyes. It's okay. And I'm fine. And then Jesus appeared. And they could see them with their spiritual sight. Jesus appeared. And then they said, in Jesus' name, depart from me, Satan. And he's, I'm not Satan. I'm Jesus. And he said, depart from me, Satan, in Jesus' name. And then what happened after three times of doing that, the fake Jesus face just to turn to this demon. And it like distorted. And it was a demon who was acting like Jesus. People said, what the heck? Is that possible? This is what the Bible says in First and 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. Go ahead and share my screen, Melody. It says, and no wonder... And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The ESV says, no wonder, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Even your adversary, the devil, can come like an angel of light. I once had a friend when I was a youth pastor, youth Bible study group club leader in my high school. So we had a Bible study club, and I was the president of the club, something like that. It was like a youth leader. So this was in addition to being a youth pastor at my local church. But while I was in high school, I led a youth Bible study club. And, I, and one girl came in one day and she was heavily Catholic. And we had people who were Catholic too that came. But this particular girl was visited by an angel and this angel began teaching her lots of things that were off. And it wasn't until she said stuff that was purely against the Bible that I said, well, something's wrong here. And I remember talking to her about it. And I wish I would have talked to her more because I didn't talk to her enough about it. Maybe I was too shy at that time, but it was dangerous because this angel was teaching her false things. The Bible says in Galatians chapter one, verse eight, evidently some people are trying to trouble you, trying to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel contrary to the one that we preach to you, let him be under curse. As I, we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary or against the gospel that you have already received, let him be under curse. You're telling me that a, an angel could appear and start sharing things with us? Yes, even false angels have taught many things to mankind over the years. The fallen angels, there's lots of evidences for that. Read the book of Enoch. There's lots of more details about that kind of stuff. Stuff that we weren't supposed to know, at least not at that time. Causes us to sin. Causes us to become an heir. They'll take good things that are pure and even twist those things. Okay? And now they'll, that, that these kinds of things happen. So this girl was being taught doctrines of demons. Is there such thing as doctrines of demons? Or do the demons come in to try and teach us doctrines? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 3 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in later times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. And doctrines of devils 
speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meat, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And it just, and there's more, there's more to it. But it's very possible that a time would come in later times, we're here, we're in later times, from when this was written, and people are being seduced by spirits that get us off the path of the cross. They'll get us into astrology, they'll get us off to in Kabbalah, they'll get us off into a lot of stuff where we're accessing spiritual realms but not through Christ, where we're accessing the gifts of God without going through Christ, where we're accessing forbidden things from that God had told us to stay away from. And we don't know those things. If you're not reading your word, you're not understanding what some of those things are. But there are things that just get us off track from the true gospel. And who leads us there? Satan, your adversary, giving you seducing spirits. Seducing spirits will come upon the earth. They'll come in the form of aliens. They'll come in the forms of angels. And they will try to deceive you towards the end. You must hold fast to your faith. Now, let's go back into more of our core doctrines because I had to lay some of these things down for you so you understand how some of these things work. And I'm so glad you're hearing me and listening. Verse 36 of Matthew chapter 24. But concerning the day and the hour, no one knows. Nor the angels in heaven, or the Son of Man. Oh, one moment. Sorry about that. Nor the angels in heaven, nor the Son of Man, but the Father only. So there was a moment Jesus said that, listen, I'm going to be able to come back to get you. I'm going to come to bring a judgment on the earth. There's going to be a taken away event. He said this, there'll be two men in the field, two men in the, one will be taken, one will be left, two women grinding at the mill, one will be taken, one at the mill, one left. I don't even know when that day will be. But stay awake. For you do not know on the day when your Lord is coming. It says here, even the Son doesn't know, only His Heavenly Father. How does this work in real life? In real life, in Jewish custom, the bride would be given ten coins on her head. And these coins represent the Ten Commandments. If the bride ever lost a coin, she would search everywhere until she finds it. In fact, the Bible talks about this event. These, if somebody saw this woman breaking one of the commandments, they would have a legal right to take one of the coins from her head. And if the father's watching her and the bride comes and she's missing all these coins, it's a sad thing. But when she finds the coin, it's a big deal. Okay, because it says, hey, I kept my purity. I kept the commands of God. I wasn't doing these things. I wasn't breaking the Sabbath. I wasn't bearing false witness. I wasn't committing adultery. I wasn't doing these things. She, it was, it's a big testimony because she has kept the word. The father is the one that watches the bride while the son is out preparing his home, his place. So the son goes out and of the son from the father and he goes building a place. Now, Jesus told us this in the Bible. He says in John chapter four, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. In the same manner, Jesus goes to prepare the place for you. And what does he wait for? The son waits for the sound from the father. When the father's ready, he'll tell his servant, blow the trumpet to call my son. In the Bible, it tells us that there will be a sound of a trumpet that will be blown that will signal the coming of the son of man. And when you hear that trumpet call, when you hear that trumpet call, it's already too late. That's the time. It's done. The bridegroom is coming. He's right there. He's on his way. And Jesus will also come. So the father would say, hey, that means that the son is now ready to get his bride. He can free to just go get his bride because she's ready. Now the father watches the development of the bride. As she's got, sometimes the bride was young. Sometimes she was not ready. Sometimes she's not, she just needs more preparation. There's more, there's more of this type of attitude found in the book of Esther. Where even the best of the women on earth. Esther was the best of the women on earth. And even she had to go to six months of makeup and six months of oil, treatments. She had to learn techniques. She had to learn what it's like to be and serve at that higher level to serve as queen. 
So she had to go to queen classes, okay? And along with all of her other, all the other girls who were in the competition as well, they all had to go to this, even though she was the best. She had to go. Now, God is preparing us because the Bible tells us that we are the bride of Christ. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 through 9 says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. His wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Did you put it on mute? It's your phone. Oh, it's mine? Can you put it on mute? <laughs> Righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Blessed, right? Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. This is from the last book of the Bible, Revelation 7 through 9. Here's another one. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. For I am a jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Ephesians 5.32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 18, thousands years before, over a thousand years before Christ came. I think it's 2,000 years actually. Lift up your eyes, look around and see. All these gather together and come to you. As I live, says the Lord, you shall surely clothe yourselves with them at all as an ornament and bind them on you as a bride does. We can go on into where the Bible talks about his relationship with his people, Israel, and his people, Judah, which are the two separate parts of the tribe. When the kingdom was split and we had two kings, God likened them unto brides, and both were doing bad. And he said, I divorce you because of these things, but I will again marry you or your descendants. And so the Bible often refers to God's people as the bride and he is the groom. Does this make sense? Now, when I go back to read our passage in Matthew chapter 25, this makes a little bit more sense. The kingdom of heaven will be like the ten virgins who took their lamps to meet the bridegroom. So they're all the bride of the groom. And just, there's not just one. We are the body of Christ, but we are also individuals. We are the bride, as it were, of Christ. Now, our job is to follow these instructions. These five women were foolish, and the other five were wise. The five wise ones, they took their lamp, and they were ready with extra oil. The oil represents many things. But primarily, it represents the Holy Spirit. They have enough of the Spirit of God inside of them that they are burning and they are ready. And they can't even spare an ounce of what God has given them when the moment happens and they hear the sound. They all became drowsy, but at midnight, there was a cry. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Now we got to go. We got to go. We got to go now. The five wise were waiting. They were waiting for this moment. They were wise because they were waiting and they said, I'm ready, I'm ready. And they had their lights burning and they're waiting. Their job was to burn, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to burn and to wait for the coming of their Lord to take them. That was their job. Their job, I'm gonna say that again, was to be filled with the oil, the filled with the Holy Spirit, to be burning and looking and waiting. Now they needed that oil to light the way through the darkness because things will get dark before the coming of the, man, of the Son of Man. Things will get dark. And at the end of the age, things will get dark. But the church is going to be more refined as time goes on. We're going to be becoming more and more powerful. We're going to be filled more and more with His Spirit. We're going to be operating in signs, wonders, miracles, and they will be commonplace. And we're going to enter many of these things. Our spirits are going to rise up in the Lord before the great coming of the Lord, before the final day, before the end of the book. However, whatever circumstances lead to these end of the book type moments, the moments when Christ comes, whether it's at the very end or another rapture event, However it happens, Ecclesiastes says what's happened before will happen again. There's nothing new under the sun. 
Satan plied one way with Antichrist, you can easily see he's doing the same thing again. We all see it. What do the elites do? They try to usher in the beast, the Antichrist, demonic entities. They open CERN. They open portals. They f openly talk about these things. They openly flaunt it in their ceremonies that they do publicly. Just look at the open, just research the opening ceremonies of CERN. You'll see the Baphomet worship and the portals opening, these demonic entities. They love to do these things to usher in their coming of their Messiah. But we, who are the believers, we're called to pray and wait for the coming of our Lord. In the meantime, we occupy until He comes. Amen. Now, let's finish up a few parts of this story. The five others who didn't spend their time wisely were not ready. And now at the last moment, they're like, oh, let me, can we have some oil? Please give me, give me, give me some oil. And, some, and the brides are saying, no, we cannot share. And we can't afford to share. I need to make sure that I have enough to get to him. I need to make sure that he has enough where he's going to find me. Last thing I need is him to tell me, I don't know you. Because there is a feast coming. In Matthew chapter 22, which it seems like we're spending a lot of time in Matthew. For many are called, but few are chosen. Look at this. Let's read this. I want to read this parable. I was looking for this earlier before I started the message. Again, Jesus spoke this parable saying, The kingdom of heaven may be, become, may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. Is this making sense? Am I putting it together for you? Who's the king? Jesus. Wait, Father God. Who's, yeah, that's right. Father God. Who is the son? Jesus. Jesus. In this parable. Mm -hmm. And he says, He sent his servants. Who are his servants? Angels. The angels and who else? The chosen people, the prophets, and the leaders, the pastors, evangelists, missionaries, evangelists, teachers, apostles. He sent his servants to call those who were invited to the feast, but they would not come. It's like the we get into this conversation about the... And I remember Superfood talking to me about the other, a couple weeks ago. He was like, man, no matter how much I try to tell my friends, family, and loved ones, they're not ready. I tell them, buy some XRP, buy some of the XLM. Get some Sheba, get some ready for some prophetic. We, I want you to be ready. Get some Dinar, get some. He tries to tell people and they don't listen. Same with, right, you know, this stuff, right? We tell a lot of people and people don't listen. You can have a million dollars and people won't listen, okay? There's always going to be something that's going to come and people will not come. It's happened since the Bible days. God said it would happen. He prepares everything and they don't come. Again, he sent other servants saying, tell those who are invited. See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen, my fat and calves have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to my wedding feast. The other day, Margie, she went through a lot of work. She went through a lot of work to prepare her New Year's Eve. And it was, I think it was just me and you. I don't know if she invited anybody else. But I think she would have been absolutely heartbroken if at the last moment we said, Oh, we're not going to come. Because they prepared so much. We, it, it was beautiful what they prepared. The food. I'll just show you real quick. Oh, we don't. Oh, it must be on my phone. I didn't upload. Yeah, this Christmas. Oh man, I took it. Yeah. It's okay. okay, it's okay. But we, I took a picture of it the other day, and it was just beautiful. What they had prepared for us, and I don't really like Filipino food, but she was like, "I'll make sure I get fried chicken for you." Pastor Song, I get you, I get you what you like. They got me some Coke. I used to not drink so much soda in America because all the high fructose corn syrup. But here they have some of the sodas made with real sugar, some of them. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll eat it here. I'll drink some here and there. And we got some Coke. We got some, some fried chicken and some weird, weird macaroni salad stuff and just weird stuff. It's not so weird for us. Yeah, it's not weird for you, Melody. It's not weird for me. It's weird for me because, you know, it's different. It's just very different, the food here in the Philippines. But it was a blessing for her. When she saw that we arrived, she was like, oh, good. And she was like, here, come and eat. And I'm so glad you guys are here. And I felt the same way when I threw my party. I was like, who's coming? Invite some more people. There were some people I invited. They couldn't come because the storm started happening. And people said, I'm going to be there. And they didn't come. But a lot of people did come to my party. And it was beautiful. And I was glad to invite them. If we feel this way on our earthly way, how much our Heavenly Father may feel a little upset. Let's read what happens. Again, he sent other servants. Tell those who are invited, see, I'm ready. 
So they didn't come. He said, come on, God, tell them how good it is. He first offers you, and then people say no. And then he says, go back and tell them again, but this time make it sweet. Sweeten the deal. Look, we got the fattened calf. We got the oxen. Okay, we got some burgers and some steak. Yummy. Some, we got the carne asada. It's ready. We got the lemon juice, the, the onions. Oh my gosh. It, guys. Look it. Mm, that lemon juice. We got the burritos. Come on, it's ready. It's ready. It's slaughtered. It look, it's ready to be fried up on the grill. Come. Yeah? Oh yeah, I, I miss the Arizona burritos. I miss them so much. They're so good. Sorry to interrupt. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and they went off. One to his farm, one to his business. We're too busy. We got our business to run. I got my crops. I got my corn. I got my corny jokes to tell. But the rest seized his servants. Some of them got tired of hearing it. Just stop, just shut up already. They seized the servants, treated them shamefully, killed them. The king was angry. He's trying to do something good for us, and they kill him. I'm reading that book that Claudia recommended. Heavenly Man by you something, you Joan or you June or something. And I'm listening to the book right now, the audiobook. And he was talking about these people in China, how the missionaries were sent, and there was a group of people, they started with the B, they called like the brokers or something. And they went and started killing these missionaries because they thought they were doing bad. And the missionaries were just trying to tell them the way to heaven. And now all the Chinese people were started repenting because of how they treat, how bad they treated these first missionaries who first came to show them the way. It's the same. They treat them, they burn their cities. Then it says the king was en angry and he sent the troops to destroy those murderers and burned their city. It made the king upset. But does he stop the wedding feast? He burned the enemies who tried to stop him. And then he says, no. He said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. So therefore, go to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you can find. And those servants went out into the road and gathered them were all who they found, both the good and the bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. God said, fine, just give me an event where we get to this wedding feast. I don't even care if they're good or they're bad. I'll sort them out later. We'll make sure that they have the wedding garments. What are the wedding garments? To be clothed with Christ. The Bible says we receive the garments of salvation. Let's just pull it up real quick because I want you guys to be experts in your word. Okay. This is found in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10. It's going to say, I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh out, or decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride ordains, or adorneth herself with jewels. So as a bride puts on her jewels, who is the one that gives us the wedding garments? Jesus. Jesus gives us the bridegroom. The bridegroom is Jesus, the groom. Okay, what we know in English is the groom. It's the bridegroom. He prepares his bride's dress. You guys understand how it's all related to what we're talking about, the wedding feast, right? To, that's the theme of the message. Now, M Melody, when I was preparing Melody's dress, I actually myself picked out her dress. And I made it beautifully and I covered it with stones. I covered it with beautiful... Yeah, a few beautiful stones. People said, wow, they never saw a dress so pretty. I made sure it was perfectly tailored to her and it fit her perfectly and it was beautiful. Can you send me a picture too? No? Okay, I won't show it. All right, but it was beautiful. And I myself did that. And I did that because of Jesus, by the way. I did that just because I was like, the Lord does it, so I'm gonna do it for you. If I'm gonna pick you out, I'm gonna make sure I get you a good one and do it myself if I have to. Now I didn't, I had it designed. I had it specifically designed. And I had it, and then I decorated it with those ornaments. Ornaments. Now, it says this. Therefore, oh, let's go back now into that passage we were reading. 
When the king came to look at the guest, he saw there was a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and cast him out into outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's hell. For many are called, but few are chosen. Okay. And this is also as a quick side note. There are people who access spiritual realms. They access heavenly realms, but they don't have the garments of salvation. I don't care if you're having spiritual experiences and seeing visions of angels. If you're not right with Christ, at the end of the book, you're going to hell. Okay? At the end of the day, if you're not right with Christ, even if you can do all the miracles, signs, and wonders, if you're not right with Christ, you're going to hell. <gasps> Pastor Song, how can you say that? How can you say that? Remember, we talked about this before. Share my screen. If I speak in the tongues of men and tongues of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and can understand all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I have, if I deliver my body to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. Look what it says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Who prophesies? The Christians. Many will say, in your name, how we cast out devils? Who cast out devils in Jesus' name? The Christians. In my name, how, in my name they have done many wonderful works. Who does the signs, wonders, and works in Jesus' name? The Christians. Jesus said, in my name you shall do these things. That's what the Bible tells us. In my name you shall do these things. Then I will profess unto them, but I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. But Lord, I thought you called me. Many are called, but few are chosen. But Lord, I thought you called me. I thought I knew. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. You can have experiences with the Lord. You can say, but Lord, we, we did this. We did that for you. We did all of these things for you. And at the end, be disqualified. Paul said, I run my race in such a way that I myself will not be disqualified. He said this at the end of his ministry. He was serving the Lord all his life. But at the end, to give it all up? He said, I'm not going to do that. I'm running so that I won't. Work out your, the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. This is not just respect, as some versions translate it. Fear and trembling is to have a healthy fear of God. The Jesus said this, fear him who can cast your body and soul into hell. There are cotton candy preachers who tell you, don't, don't worry about fearing God. But Jesus said, fear God. Don't worry about God casting you into hell. Jesus said, fear the Lord who can cast body and soul into hell. Let's pull it up real quick. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Jesus said this, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Instead, fear the one who can both destroy body and soul in hell. Scary verse. We, you see, we take this seriously. We take this seriously. And it's a scary thing to be shut out. Here's the thing. Jesus wants us to know how the wedding feast works. Those wise and those foolish. Here it is. Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Verse 9 of Matthew chapter 25. But they answer, saying, Since there will not be enough for us, go rather to the dealers and buy yourselves. And while they were going, the bridegroom came. And Jesus came. And those who were ready, they went to that marriage feast like we read about in the Bible today. But the door was shut. And though they're seeking and knocking, let me in, please. Lord, Lord, open to us. Look, it says this. Lord, open to us. But he answered, truly I say to you, I do not know you. Where else did he say, do not know you? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And then Jesus gives us the warning. There it is, verse 13. It's everything you need to know. Watch therefore, for you do not know the day nor the hour. Now, what are we watching for? For Jesus coming, for the end of the book, or for the end of our life, when we meet Jesus, that moment when we have to stand before God of eternity. And it could be tomorrow, it could be today. Today could be my very last day, and God will say, well done, good or faithful, just servant. Or, I'll die. 
And I'll stand before God. And like my dad always says, you don't want to hear God say, <laughs> that's what my dad says. He says, either God's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. He's going to say, or oh, what can I say? We don't want to hear that. We want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. We want to be faithful. We want to be ready for when our Heavenly Father blows that trumpet and tells, us, tells Jesus, go get your bride so that we can enter in heaven. We don't want to be shut out like I was out of my apartment hours saying, Oh, Lord, just let me get in. And that's what I was praying. I was on there for hours, three hours. Lord, just help me get in some way. I don't know why this is so hard. I practice picking logs, but these tools are not the right tools. Or maybe I'm doing it wrong. Or maybe I'm out of practice. And I just wish that I had brushed up on my lock picking skills. Because some guys can do it in 30 seconds. And I was taking forever just to get like a few of the pins. And I still couldn't get it. I was shut out of my own room. Meaning it was something that belonged to me. It was my right. It was my right and it's your right. Jesus said this, and this is our final scripture for today. John chapter one, verse two says this. Verse 11, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. Just like when he sent his servants. There's other passages in the Bible that God tells us the same story. One of the passages, he says, I sent the servants to them. They beat them and killed them. And then he said, so the king said, I will send my own son because surely they'll listen to him. But they beat him, killed him, and did what they want with him. They crucified Jesus. But now what will God do at the end? The cup of wrath will fill up at the end. And he'll pour it on the earth and the whole earth will drink it. But his servants, the ones who love him, who are hidden in Christ, they're going to be a way, there's going to be a way to escape. Jesus said, pray that you may escape all these things. That's what Jesus said to the disciples. And I won't pull that scripture up, but I want to give you this last scripture. But all to him who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. Children not born of blood, nor the desire of the will of man, but born of God. And this is what it is to be born again. To be born of God. Not just because you're born in this world and you have a flesh. No, but you got a right now. You have a right. The option is yours to become the children of God. That room belonged to me. If I get in, it's because I'm ready with the key. And if I don't have the key, if the key, I lost the key. The key was inside the room. <laughs> yeah, it was, on the, it was on the table and I put the key away. God gave us the oil. He gives us the Holy Spirit. He helps us get ready. He literally dresses us up to be ready. We have that right. It's our choice. What will we do? What will we do with that salvation? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's say a closing prayer. And after this, we'll, I want to take some prayer requests. We'll take those privately, not on YouTube. But let's say a closing prayer. Amen. Lord, we thank you so much for this new year, for this day. Lord, we know there's some strange things coming upon the earth and in our future. But we don't want to be shut out. We don't want to be knocking on your door saying, Lord, let us in. For you said in the Bible, many will say to me, Lord. We don't want to say, Lord, Lord, we, didn't we prophesy? Didn't we do these things? Aren't we the bridegroom, the virgins you chose? Aren't we the virgins you called? Weren't we made clean? Weren't we pure? Because of you. But you'll look at our other, you'll look at what we're wearing. You'll look at our iniquity. So we repent, Lord. We repent of our sins. Yes. You'll look at our life. You'll look at what we've done with our wedding garments. You'll look at what we've done with our son, with your son. Yes. And we want to be hidden with you. And though we are not perfect, we need you to continually make us righteous. Yes. We want to have the garments of salvation and we also want to have groves of righteousness. Yes. I want everyone here listening under the sound of my voice to make it to heaven. Yeah. To not have to die, but to be taken away, even if that's for our lifetime. I've received dreams of my life of a rapture event. I know many people who have seen rapture events happen. And because you teach it, I teach it. And I share it and I remind people to be ready. Although I believe we have personal time, the only one who knows for sure is you, our Heavenly Father. You kept this even from your Son. 
because you know the hour and you have delayed and the Bible says that Peter said the Lord is not slow in coming as some of you consider it slow but rather he is patient not wishing that any should perish you keep giving us more time some people have seen the visions of the clock strike midnight and then the hand being pulled back and giving us more time maybe we have seven years left maybe we have more maybe we have 30 years left maybe something is going to happen in those times maybe our lives will forever change whatever the case is Lord however the end looks we want to be ready and waiting for you Jesus and we will say come Lord Jesus come and we will say Lord please make us ready do not shut us out give us enough oil your the Bible says your grace is sufficient for us but will you find such faith faith upon the earth do we have such faith to receive that grace Will we take advantage of that grace or will we trample upon the grace as the Bible tells us in Hebrews? How we can trample on grace and that there will be no more grace left. There are pastors and preachers who teach hyper grace. They teach unlimited grace, but the Bible teaches that the grace can be trampled upon and end. We don't want to trample upon your grace. When you give us a chance to repent, it's like that window. We have to take it. It's a window of time. A window of moment just like when we have our bills you give us a grace period even though we are in debt or in debt to you they give us a grace period a time to get right a time to settle your bill even though it's due and even though we owe it you give us grace and it's the same with our life the Bible says the soul who sins will die but you gave us grace we owe you that but by your grace you gave us what we need to enter heaven. And you gave us your son. He fulfilled the law for us so that even when we can uphold it, we repent, we come to him, and he covers us because of his righteousness. Not because of our own righteousness, but because of his. Our only job is to hold fast to what we have. To hold fast to Christ and him crucified. To hold fast to you. And even through all the deceptions, Lord, and all the things that are going to come upon the earth, we're going to hold fast to the gospel. Even though Satan will try to teach us other gospels and try to teach us many other things, we're going to hold fast to you. And everyone who hears this message, they're going to hold fast to you and not be deceived. Do not let us be deceived, Father. Rather, let us be ready so that we can enter in to the wedding feast, into the joy of our Lord. And forever be with you. you. How will we look forward to our heavenly kingdom? Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have special prayer requests, we'll put them in the chat. Or if you want to unmute in just a few moments, we'll have some fellowship. And we'll be here for for another 40 minutes or 30 minutes or so. And then I just want to say that. Amen. So glad. We'll look forward to reading some of your comments. Good. All right. I'll be right back. <laughs>